Folks, we are looking at, you might mistake this for new, but this is a used, okay, Coyote DK6010 SE cab tractor. All right, just got this one in. This is a used machine. Boy, I forget. I think it was a 2022, just a year old, give or take. It might have been a 23, it might have been a 21, but it's, it's not old. It's got 37 hours on it. Just a beautiful machine, all right? We showed you another DK series tractor before, and this is... This is the biggest one in the series, all right? So it's gonna have the most horsepower. Now it says 60 on there, like the, so it's a DK10 series and the 60 is kind of the model. But I looked it up online, it's about 57 horsepower right in there. So still, that's a lot of horsepower for a tractor this size. And again, footprint wise, this is gonna be comparable to like a John Deere 3039R, 30, like a 3R series, your 3033, 3039, 3046. That's about where that comparison ends because the capability of this thing is gonna destroy the 3R series, all right? And you're gonna get this for less money than the 3R. So I want you to, you gotta have something to compare it to. So think about one of those when you're, when you're going through and looking at this. And I'll give you a few specs on it as well on the loader and on the three point, for example, I'll give you the machine weight and everything else. Now this is hanging down. Um, one of these screws is out of here. I think they did that for transport. Didn't find the screw. I don't know if they put it somewhere that we didn't find. Well, let's get a new screw in there and, and hold that back up. But that's why that's hanging down. But uh, a lot of nice touches on these Coyote tractors. You can see they've got little wiring um, outputs so you can add on additional work lights if you want to. It's gonna come standard with these rear work lights already and then the forward facing lights too. Some of the Coyotes that I've seen do have the rear wiper that's on there. This is what that's for, so you can add on a rear wiper, even though this one doesn't have it. It is something you can put on. It's got a handle on there so you can pop out this rear window if you want to. Washer fluid gets held there. You got a nice toolbox. Again, toolbox is a toolbox. Um, it'd be really cool if there's a way to put a big, gigantic toolbox on here, but it just seems par for the course. Now, one rear remote is standard on basically all of the Coyote tractors. There's like one or two series that don't have them, but you'll see at least one remote on all of them that comes standard with an option for a second one that's over here. As long as you have one rear remote, you can add on one of those hydraulic multipliers that we've talked about before that basically can turn the one remote into six rear remotes if you wanted to, and you can use that for a hydraulic top and tilt kit. You know, we, I always use an example of a, a, a pull type snowblower that has uh, hydraulic rotation, hydraulic deflector, hydraulic back drag and all that. So, remotes can add up pretty quickly. Now this lever here is your external three-point control. If the machine was on, you can raise or lower with that. Uh, right now, you can actually see that the three-point arms go down when the machine is off, you can still do that. So draw bar, gonna be standard, 540 RPM rear PTO. 540 RPM is gonna be the same thing that's on a little John Deere 1025 hour all the way up through the utility tractors. It's all the same thing. Still 540 RPM uh, on the rear PTO, category one three-point hitch. There are upgraded turnbuckles that you can get for the Coyote. This one does not have the upgraded turnbuckles, but that is an option that's available to get. I like to kind of point out just the back end. I mean, this is a robust looking back end. You've seen some tractors out there that are a little chintzy looking, a little weak looking. Not that they are necessarily weak, but it's it is reassuring to have something that looks beefy and robust. Uh, R14 tires, now these aren't loaded. You could fill these with liquid ballast and uh, ballparking. I have not looked up this tire size. You're probably gonna get five to 600 pounds of rear, of rear ballast if you load these tires. I love the R14 tread pattern. It's a hybrid, all right? It's a hybrid between a turf tire, an R4 industrial tire, and then an ag tire, all right? It kind of merges the best qualities of all of those. You still get good traction. It's safe to take on your lawn. It cleans out really well. It rides very well. Just a lot of really good properties about it. It is the most expensive tire you can get for compact tractors these days. Um, so you're gonna pay a premium for it. Now, typically it will fit the same wheels. Like if you had R4 tires on here, it would still fit the same wheel. You don't have to replace your wheel, but a nice touch. You see this tread pattern on there, you know you're getting a premium tire. Something important, yeah, not on the fronts, just on the rears, I like to point out, all right, John Deere doesn't really do this anymore on their compacts. They used to, they don't anymore. The center hub is bolted on. And why I like that is because that gives you flexibility, all right? You can unbolt that hub and reposition it, reconfigure it in different ways and bolt it back on and widen or narrow the footprint of your tractor. So instead of needing to get 
wheel spacers on there or dual wheels, which you can't do on this tractor, you can get a lot of additional stability simply by making adjustments with the center hub because it's bolted on instead of welded in place. Uh, full factory cab, all right? <clears throat> so this is gonna have heat, air conditioning, uh, you know, wiper on the front, the work lights we talked about. Both doors are gonna have, I'll open, I'll open up this other side too, I'll come around. Both doors are gonna have pistons to help hold them open, which is really nice. Again, the John Deere doesn't have that. They've only got the piston assist on one side, all right? These cabs are quiet, sound. I don't, I don't, I don't think that there's any difference in the quality of cab between a, a deer, Kubota versus the Coyote. As far as when you slam the door closed and you're driving along, nothing's rattling. You know, there's no dust getting in there. It's, it's solid, it's secure. Now the fit and the finish is a little bit behind deer and Kubota, all right? It's not as high of a quality of fit and finish, and that's not to say it's, it's subpar. It's just more basic, I guess, is what I would, what I would say about it. Um, not the end of the world. Got a nice step right here. I don't know if there's a step on the other side or not. No, no step on the other side. Take a look down by that step, though. You see the fuel tank? That's one of the features I really do like. On the John Deere's, a lot of those fuel tanks are way up in the fender, okay? And so if you're filling it by hand, that can be a pain. But if you have the fuel tank down low like this and like what a lot of the Kubotas do as well, it's a lot easier to access. Uh, still out of the way, hidden there behind the, the tires and kind of inside the footprint of the tractor. A little bit about the loader, all right? So big, beefy loader, big cylinders on here, nothing, nothing weak looking about it. And this loader will lift a lot of weight. I'm gonna have to pull up the spec here in a minute and tell you. But this is a just uh i mean you look at the the steel on here they're they're not they're not cheaping out anywhere you know they've got a whole subframe that goes back and ties the loader to the back end of the tractor as well so it's it's designed to lift a lot of weight and do it well i have found the loader controls to be very smooth uh, very responsive very tight uh, they come standard with a skid steer quick attach on there okay so you just pull pull a couple of levers you can take your bucket off put on forks put on a snow pusher put on a grapple put on there's tons of attachments you can put out or put on here. You will see this doesn't have a third function on it, but it's got the provision like right where you would mount it. And now Summit Hydraulics makes a aftermarket third function kit that you can put on here. Save 5% with code GWT. Super easy to do. This is in fact probably one of the easiest brands to put the third function on. So again, you spend an hour or two, you're going to get it done for like half the cost of what the OEM will charge you to get it done. Love their buckets that they put on here. I, I haven't seen any other size of, or type of bucket that's on these uh, DK series. And they've got that uh, kind of this little rib here that sticks out that gives it some extra strength and the reinforcing down below and, and the rolled and bent top. And this is thick underneath there. Get a look underneath there, Chris, because that's reinforced underneath there as well. So the John Deere, it stops here with a tiny little bend in the front. And you see these top edges get bent and crinkled all the time so this is way beefier it's also pre-drilled to add on a cutting edge it's it just makes sense i mean it's, it's stuff if i was if i was like hey let's build a tractor these are the things that i would do on it they just make sense to do that's what you want in the tractor that you're looking at folks we are proud to be sponsored by rimguard solutions a liquid ballast weight it goes right inside your tires completely hidden we're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Gotta pop that open. There, and then open that up. Again, one piece hood, all right. Everybody doesn't have that, but a lot of manufacturers do. It's nice to get access in there. Loader is quick park, so you can take it off. If you had to do some major engine service on it, you can remove the loader and have complete engine access. The one thing I think is a little goofy, okay, the air filter is nice to get access to, but look at that battery down there. You gotta do a little bit of surgery to get to that fortunately you don't have to deal with that a lot 
It is easier than some models or some manufacturers to get to, but that is not the, that is not the easiest location. I guess while I'm thinking about it too, right here, this is a bucket level indicator, all right? So where this bend is at is, uh, means indicates that the bucket is level. So you can see it from the operator seat and you should be able to make adjustments on that. Yeah, with this slot right here, you can loosen this up and slide that back and forth. Like if you have a different tool, like if you're using pallet forks a lot, uh, for example, oh, those are locked in place there. Then you can, and it has a different level because sometimes a snow pusher, pallet forks, a bucket will all have a different position when they're actually level on the ground. You can make those adjustments with this bucket level indicator. External mirrors are nice. Now these mirrors, I have talked about these before too. I whack my mirrors in my big Kubota uh, all the time on things. And so these mirrors do a good job of staying in place and not um, moving nearly as much when you do whack a branch. <clears throat> now the last Coyote that we talked about also didn't have armrests. They are optional. They're not standard. I don't know why they aren't standard because I can't believe that for a manufacturer cost, they're more than like 10 bucks. And there's no way that that is really worth not putting on here. So Coyote, just include the stinking armrests as standard, would you please? Um, other than that though, that's really my only complaint inside these cabs. This one does not have a radio. It's got the knockout for the radio. You can add that in. It does have speakers for the radio back here. So you just put one of those in. Honestly, I never, ever, ever use the radio inside any of my machines that have it. I don't use it inside the wheel loader, the skid steer, the tractors, the Ranger. I don't use the radio in anything. So it's not a big deal to me. It's nice to have. I know I got a buddy just down the road that got an L6060 and, you know, it's got Bluetooth in it even. And he doesn't like that. He doesn't like the radio. So, you know, I, I'd be curious, I guess, what you guys think about that. Leave a comment. But is the radio worth it in here? I put on headphones and or AirPods, one or the other, and just listen to music or to an audiobook anyway. So no big deal for me. Uh, all your HVAC controls are there, dome light. All your vents are up top. I think it's pretty cool if you guys notice it, but there's a lot of plastic still on this machine. So there's plastic up top, plastic over here on the fender, plastic on the seat. There's even plastic on a decal that was outside still. I mean, this thing is nearly, nearly new. So I'm debating, I have to keep a few machines for myself this winter for all of our snow removal videos and stuff that we do. I am not using an open station tractor this winter. And so, uh, Chris, show them that little coyote over there. That's a CX2510. That's an HVAC cab on there too. So I'm thinking I might keep that one for my small machine, keep this one for my kind of midsize machine, and then keep my ear showing that Kubota too. And then keep the... Uh, the big Kubota for my, my bigger machine for all the snow stuff this winter, but we'll see. You know, these are, these are some real first world problems that I'm dealing with here right now. Um, oh, something I didn't know or notice, I guess, or think about on that other Coyote that we did, I think it's gotta be the same, but I really actually like this door handle. It's up here, it's down here, it's down here. So wherever you're at, you know, if you're out of the cab or up here or anywhere, you can just grab that thing and close it, that's super nice. It's got the same thing on the other side as well. I thought that was a really nice touch that I didn't realize was cool until I noticed it. Um, anyway, cup holder here, some more storage, maybe for a cell phone or something, another tray storage there. You have your stereo and auxiliary control, 12 volt. Look at that, you got auxiliary and USB. What's down here? Hey, look at that. I don't know what this is about. They must just give this to you. Diesel fuel handling tips. Yeah. I won't go through that right now. Um, you got your ranges. All right. So it's the three range. That's to be expected. Every tractor is going to have that in this size, whether it's a hydro or a, or a gear drive. Uh, low, neutral, medium, high. All that. This is going to be your front wheel assist, otherwise known as four wheel drive. You just push that lever back and forth. Um, at the heel down here, locking rear differential, that's basically where that's always at on every tractor. It does have a split brake, all right, um, with a parking brake right here, so you'd push that in, set the parking brake, 
or at least it's something, something interesting. Uh, we could not get one of these tractors started at one point. It would not turn on. And this system is smart enough or maybe annoying enough with safety stuff to know that if it's in the split brake mode and you only press one of them down, it won't start. It actually has a little split brake, brake, blah, split brake symbol that shows up on there. So lock those together and push it and put it in neutral before you start it. Tilt steering, okay, up, down. Uh, regen stuff in there, cruise control. Little flasher button there, this is your throttle. Up, down. Boy, I'm really doing the, the Contra cheat code. It's like up, down, left, right, A, B, select, start. Man, it's throwback. Oh, what else? I guess we're over on this side. Now it's a twin touch pedal, okay? That's one of the things about I, I, that I love about the other orange. I hate the treadle pedal, okay? This is just like John Deere. Look at that. It's a little bit further apart too. Somebody else pointed that out and I didn't think about it, uh, but it is a little bit, the pedals are further apart than the John Deere, which is nice because you have, you know, when you're in boots, especially in the winter time, bigger and clunkier, you got a little bit more space. Maybe you just have gigantic feet, you know? You got more space there to be able to, not mess up and touch both of them the forward is still on the left the reverse is on the right i still think it would have been nice if they did that the other way but we can do anyway loader joystick right here rear pto wiper for the front uh that's what must be your work light one there this is your defrost you can see defrost right there in the back window that's pretty well that's pretty nice defrost I'm trying to think my kubota doesn't have defrost on the back window i don't see any lines on there that's pretty nice. I think that's uh, that's not something that's very common. Uh, a little more storage right there. Uh, three-point or rock shaft control. This will raise and lower your three-point on the back. Okay. This is going to be for your remote. So if you had something plugged into that, like a hydraulic top link plugged into that rear remote we talked about earlier, you can extend it or retract it with this. More slots there if you had more remotes and whatnot. It's more knockouts if you had other electric controls. Nice seat, okay? It is a very comfy seat. It's a, a nice suspension seat. So again, I mean, the only thing I would do, these bolt on somewhere. You can feel the, the screws back there where it goes. The armrest kit, seat belt. I'm six foot, almost I'm rounding up six foot three, about 200 pounds, plenty of room. Try to give you a point of reference. Uh, the seat's back as far as it'll go. I don't have any more room to slide it back. I don't need any more room, but I, I am I am plenty comfortable in this operator station. If you're a smaller operator, just fine. I would say if you had an extra two or three inches on height, that'd be about the max. So maybe six five, six six would be about as big as uh, you could go in here and be comfortable. I I do get emails from folks time to time. Hey man, I'm six foot eight, six foot ten. What tractor can I fit? And I'm like, they just don't design tractors for you man. I mean, you get a utility tractor and that's just going to naturally have more space, but they're, you know, they're not designing tractors for, for guys that are basketball players, unfortunately. So anyway, um, we'll look up a few specs. I'll get those to you here in just a second, but that's a beautiful, beautiful machine right here. And I think, I think I'm going to hang on to it for a while, but who knows, maybe we'll, we'll sell it. If not, maybe we can find some more that are similar to it, but this DK series in general, I would look into it. It's an awesome series, super capable, a lot of bang for the buck compared to the other guys out there. And I've said it for a long time. If I was, well, when I got back into selling tractors, I, I carry John Deere, I carry Kubota, and I carry Coyote. But they're just a great machine. You're going to save a lot of money, and you can put that extra money you're saving towards the attachments because we all know you get the tractor, and that's just a start. You got to get the attachments to go along with it, too, in order to get your projects done. And on that note, if you're looking for a tractor or attachments, we would love to help you out. Go to goodworkstractors.com to see what we have to offer. We ship nationwide. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. All right, going through the specs, I want to just kind of point out what I think are the things that stand out to me about this one. Max travel speed, 18 and a half miles an hour. That's cruising along pretty good. 45 horsepower at the PTO, 57.7 engine horsepower to be exact. 93 inches tall from the top of the cab. So fits underneath an eight foot door. That's important for a lot of you. Total pump flow, huge. 16.49, 16 and a half 
gallons. Now some of that's going to be diverted for the steering, but still, that's a lot of hydraulic flow. Interesting. It says Category 2 three-point hitch. I'm going to have to check that out. Now, the thing about Category 2 is as long as the Category 2 arms are thin enough, you can still put a sleeve or a bushing on the pin that goes through and use like a Category 1 uh, quick hitch on there and then use all Category 1 attachments, which is what I will be doing if I keep this tractor. I think I'll be able to make that work. Weight with the cab, not the loader, 4,043 pounds. So you had that loader on probably 800 to 1,000 pounds. You're, you're sitting around a 5,000 pound machine, load the tires, you're at 5,500, 5,600 pounds. That's a, that's a heavy machine. That's, that's what you want. You want to be safe. You got plenty of horsepower to push that weight too. Loader, basically eight foot tall. This will reach with that bucket or uh, nine foot tall, sorry, 107.7 .7 inches. So basically nine foot tall, <laughs> high in the air to the pivot pin on there. That's, that's crazy. And it's gonna tell me how much it'll lift too. That's like crushing, crushing the John Deere. Lift capacity, 2,474 pounds. Okay, this is the same loader that was on that other DK that we talked about too. These numbers sound familiar. 2,474 pounds on a tractor the size of a 3R, footprint wise, and cheaper, okay? And to nine foot, that's nuts. Anyway, folks, those are the highlights there. I think that's pretty impressive. Oh, hang on, you know what? One thing I didn't say was how much the, uh, the three point will lift. Where's that at? Three point, three point at 24 inches out from the ends of the arms, all right? 2,716 pounds, that's a lot. That might be more than the 4R. I don't know for sure, but that is a heck of a lot of weight. That's more than you're gonna, that's a lot of weight. Anyway, point being, an impressive machine.